I got my scooter done, it's modified. Let's go ahead and start it. Hold this down, your display will appear. Now I wanna say really quick that you do not have to go inside this controller to do the bypass ground the K2 to activate third speed or go inside your controller to get the five volt supply for your headlight. That being said, you can just wire up the controller the way it is. No need to have to get inside of it for any reason. Have my five volt supply going to this USB. You can also use this as a charging port to charge your phone. I didn't use any power tools, so no drills needed or necessary for this setup. Every controller doesn't come with a display, but I found this one that does, and it was only 40 bucks, so I went with it. This being a Bird 3 scooter, I had the opportunity to wire up my tail light directly to my battery pack without having to use a step-down converter. So if you have a Bird 2 scooter, you will have to use a step-down converter for your backlight. Let's go ahead and engage our throttle. That right there indicates that cruise control is activated. It's gonna stay activated until you tap it. After you tap it, it disengages. That's it, man. Everything's good. Everything's straight. Let's go ahead and jump into our video. Let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do here, instead of using the factory throttle, I purchased a display with a throttle and everything already in one. So let's go ahead and get this. Put on this Bird 3 scooter. Now this applies with the Bird 2 and the Bird 3. So it's not just one scooter. Let's get to it. So let's go ahead and start off by working off this rubber grip. this point now that you can see that i have my rubber grip off what you want to do is take off this screw right here and to do that we will be using a t25 just need it loose it doesn't have to come all the way out now that that's done let's go ahead and loosen up our front brake cable so now let's go ahead and remove this bolt for that we will be using a t27 so let's go ahead and get this loose there you go it's loose enough now we go back up top now that we have our front brake cable undone it's loose now we can go ahead and move this out the way so we can pull this off so from up top real quick before i take this off let's go ahead and break this apart because this is just going to intervene with this and it's going to give it problems Go ahead and loosen up this screw. We're just holding this throttle together. To loosen that up, we're gonna use a T20. Let's go ahead and get that undone. All right. Now what you wanna do is disconnect this tab. Disconnect the second tab right here. All right. Now let's go ahead and stand it up. We have our tabs. As you can see, they're disconnected. Now all this is free. We can pull this out. There you go. Just want to get rid of this. Pop these tabs off. Remove these bolts on both ends. Eight millimeter and a five sixteenths. Here on the opposite end, this little screw is holding in this little brake lever. What I use to free this up is a 5.5 millimeter. What I use to break this bolt loose is a 5.8 slash 16 millimeter socket and extensions. The extensions are not needed. I just use them because I have them. This is a 3.8. Lefty loosey, righty tighty.
So at this point, the only thing that's holding this front fork together is this front brake line. Go ahead and pull that out and pull up on the fork and you will notice that the brake line will come loose. Go ahead and remove these four screws. One, two, three, four. Remove those, what we're gonna use is a T25. At this point, what you're gonna to wanna to do is get rid of these wires because they're not gonna be needed. So these are what I use originally for my headlight and my throttle wires when I wanna do the original throttle setup. We're gonna go ahead and clip this and pull it out from the top. It's not needed. Go ahead and pull this out. Now that we cut it from the bottom. Now we're gonna be replacing that with this. This is gonna take place of that cord and it's gonna go straight down here just the way that one's sitting. So let's get to that. Before I install my throttle and display, instead of me having to go inside my controller this time and getting a 5 volt supply, I'm gonna go ahead and get my 5 volt supply from a headlight through this USB right here. There you go, right there. So it's gonna be for the headlight, get my 5 volt supply from this. This is gonna go in through here. Same thing with this cable, it's gonna go down this way. So let's go ahead and get this connected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this about here. Don't need all the length, about 12 inches in length. That's all I need. If not, I probably need less, but that's good enough. Let's go ahead and install our throttle. You only have to loosen up these two bottoms, screws, this one and this one. These two top screws hold together this top part. To loosen these up, is a T15. Now that we have our throttle on our handlebar, before we close it in, we wanna go ahead and feed our cables on through. So let's just push that with your thumb, just like that. From up top, you'll see it come out right there. Check this out, right there. Both ways, it opens to this side, this side is open as well, so I'm gonna just push it on through and get this wire in there. So as you guys know, this plugs into this, but I messed up, you know, kind of being rough with it. You see, I've made a gouge inside this connector. I also bent one of the pins and I broke it trying to straighten it out. So, you know, unfortunately I'm gonna have to clip this and do the same thing with this end. And I'm gonna have to hard wire my wire. Go ahead and go close this up. I'm gonna go ahead and add my white wire and tie this down. Feed that on through. There you go, you can see it right there. So make your adjustments to where you want it to sit at. Right here is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and get these wires connected and tie this down. I took my headlight off, it makes things a little bit easier. The little wire for the headlight's not in the way. I also managed to get my my cable connected, as you can see, I had to hot glue everything together, got all the wires connected. So now what we're gonna do, I have it flushed all the way. All the wires are pinching from the back. Tighten up these two screws. The display's in that a good spot to where I can see the display. Tighten this up, it's good enough. This is what it should look like, very flushed. What you want to do is put your front brake back on. Go ahead and clip this cable. It's going to be interfering with this little deal when it closes. It's going to be trying to leave a gap. So go ahead and get rid of this. Right here, what I'm doing is pushing this brake line back into this cable. Right here at the bottom, I'm wanting to see this cable pop out. So let's go ahead and push that through. 
as you can see my cable came through now i can pull it from the bottom and this will allow this to shut properly now that we have our throttle all the way flushed we can go ahead and tighten up our screw On the opposite end, what I'm going to do is clip these connectors because it's going to be impossible for me to run these down straight down the stem. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these. And with that out the way, now I can run this straight down here. So now what we're going to do is get this to break open from right here. But before we do, we need to loosen up this back brake cable. There you go. So now that that's free, now you can lift that up with ease. So the way I'm gonna get this cable down this stem is using a coat hanger. All I'm gonna do is straighten this out, unravel it, straighten it out, and get it going. So I'm gonna tie my wires to this end and just feed them straight down. Go ahead and tape this to this, just like that. This is what it should look like after it's done. Wire fed through, you can see it all the way out through the other side. See how I have my scooter laying down sideways at an angle? The reason for that is because I need these wires pushed up against one side as far as they can go. And with this end, what you want to do is just feed this down. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and get this thing closed up. You want to make sure that this tab right here aligns with this little slit. If not, your base is not going to sit right. As you can tell right here from the bottom, it swivels all the way around. There's a whole 360. So just make sure this centers out. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Just like that. Go ahead and put our rubber grip back on. I did have to move this just a little bit out this way simply because this USB port was rubbing against this headlight and it wasn't making a complete connection. It wouldn't even fit inside the USB. So I had to scoot this over and it sits like that, which is not a big deal, still looks good. Go ahead and skip the headlight for now. So I'm gonna just wrap this up and work on the bottom and go ahead and close this or whatever, just leave that shut. Let's go ahead and work on the bottom before we get this light working. Let's go ahead and get our front fork back on. Now you want to put your brake cable right into this slit. And then like before, right inside this fork, you see a slit and it's got to slide right over this little tab. Just like that. I'll grab the cable from this end and run it straight into this hole right here from underneath. Let's put on our water guard and our bolt. So right here I tightened it up as much as I could and then moved it over to the floor that way I could finish tightening it up. Let's go ahead and get our front wheel on. This sits in there. All right, so what I'm doing is making sure this bottom hole right here is aligned. 
So those are straight, put in this top bolt. That way you can hold that in place. So we're gonna leave that alone for now. We'll make adjustments later. Let's go ahead and get our tabs on our sides and get our scooter flipped over. So as you can see, stretch out my cable and it's perfect. Now, now that this is out the way, let's go ahead and put this cover on, get this battery open. Our spring, I'm gonna go ahead and loop this up this way. And I like to grab this end with my little pliers right up top. And you just wanna loop this over this clip. Just like that. Here, what we're gonna remove is our T40s. These little seven point screws, I took these off of camera just to get that out the way. Go ahead and get our battery out of our housing. Now it's time for the bypass. Go ahead and do our bypass on our battery. Go ahead and work these little rubber seals off enough to where you can pull this up. Now the bypass is gonna be from P plus to B plus. For my bypass, what I'm using is 16 gauge wire. Cut a strand of this and just enough for me to do my bypass. Just in case you're wondering, I do have my soldering gun all the way at 500, that's the max. With the bypass, we're gonna go ahead and test it out with a voltmeter just before I get this thing shut. I would hate to have to go over my work twice. So we're gonna put black with black, positive with positive. And there you go, 41.1 volts. Get this thing shut. You want to start off by putting this in first, not on the side where the bypass is at, because this side has to slide in. So once that goes in, make sure your tabs are aligned. That's it. And I have my display cable right here. Strip this down so I can have access to my wires. Just enough, all right. What I'm gonna do is get these wires and solder them into these wires right here. So let's go ahead and get on that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put my wires back the way they were, color with color. It doesn't matter where you start at. Let's go ahead and get these on. gonna do is remove this XT60 connector and we're gonna keep the motor wires. Also need this hall wire connector. 
Now let's go ahead and get rid of this. sleeve right here which is useless clip these and just hold on to them because they do come in handy there you just want to undo this now let's go ahead and get this xt60 connector out and remove it from the board now let's go ahead and take off this xt60 connector show you guys how i do it i like to just kind of break it off in a piece where i can work with it from here what i do is just basically hold on to it and break off whatever i can until i get down to where i can break it in the center This little deal right here is our hall wire. Clip off this connector. So this is gonna be really quick. I'm not using too many wires here. Just my motor wires, all sensor wires, and my power supply. That's all I'm using in this video here. Now there's not gonna be a bypass or anything like that. No having to get five volts from the controller or anything like that because I'm already getting five volts from the USB. I'm gonna show you guys that at the end. So these right here are your hall line, your hall effect, sensor wires, and add our heat shrink. I do want to say one thing, man. So in this case, I do have that white wire for my hall sensor, so I'm going to have to go ahead and use that. If that's the case for whoever, you do have that white wire, just go ahead and connect it. Connect the wires. Everything's going to be color with color. Basically right here at this point, what you want to do is tug on your wires. Your hall sensor wires are very fragile. So pull on them just to make sure that they didn't come loose while you're heating up the heat shrink. I'm going to add that some of these controllers have a key switch that has got to be wired into this red wire. But in this case, this controller doesn't have it, so you can skip that part. So right here, what I did was use some hot glue to cover up my contact points because my heat shrink wasn't wide enough to go over the soldering pads. So just hitting it with some hot glue will take care of this job. Everything connected, my motor wire, hall wire, my battery, and lastly, my display connector. 
and hit this power button. Go ahead and work on our tail light. Now this is kind of confusing as you can see, this connector fits just like this. But if you look at the color code, red is going to black and this black is going to red. So I have to leave it like this because the other way around just doesn't, you see what I'm talking about? It's not, it's not gonna fit. So I'm just gonna connect this in just like that. I know personally that the black is red and the red is black. So it's gonna be switched around. From this end, what you're gonna do is clip off this connector. Like I was saying earlier, my black is my red and my red is my black. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So just keep that in mind if you ever come across some issue like this. Right here, all I'm gonna do is just pinch into these wires until I see some bad wire. And when I do, all I have to do is just solder my wires onto these wires. So that way when my controller turns off, this backlight will turn off with the controller. Everything will power off together. Okay, so this is typically what I do when I get my backlight and I want it to work. Normally what I would do is tap into this negative and positive on the controller output and run those with my tail light. That way my tail light would work and everything would power on and off together. But in this case, this wasn't happening. My light would just stay on all day. So stay tuned, find out what I did. There you go. That's what that should look like. Let's go ahead and test it out. I try to wire my tail light with my bottle positive and negative and my tail light would not turn off. So I did some, some fiddling around, did the same thing with this negative and this positive going to the display, but same thing, still my, head, my tail light would just stay on. So I went through my wires and I finally found a solution that worked. For your tail light to work and turn off and on with your display, you wanna use this black, and yellow connector. This right here is like a second power supply. We're gonna connect our tail light to this. Now, according to the paperwork, it shows that this connector was a power supply and I used my voltmeter and it read 41 volts. So let's go ahead and use this. I already pre-connected it and sure enough, it did work. Now, like I said before, we're gonna crisscross these wires because something is not right with this wiring. This is what that looks like. My yellow is connected to the black and my black is connected to the red. Normally it would be red to yellow and black to black, but with this connector, it's switched up right here and it's weird. So I just did what was easy and got it to work. Now let's go ahead and try this out. Connect our battery or our scooter on. And there it is, that's on. And that is off. Now let's go ahead and shut this thing and work on that headlight. You wanna grab your wire and just get it to go inside this hole right here. Right here, I use a T25 to get these two screws in place.
Be sure you put your charging port cable in. Be sure you get this cable along the inside of this groove right here. And just go all the way along with it. All right, so this back area is very easy since this controller is so small. As you can see, I'm tucking in wires using my fingers. Right here, I'm using a flathead to clear this big bolt area. Now what I'm doing is aligning this. That way I can get my screws to just go straight into place. Right here, you can see that it's seamless, no props. And just to be sure, you can look inside the screw holes just to make sure that there's no pinched wires. Go ahead and work on our headlight. I'm gonna clip this connector right here. Our 30 ohm resistor. Now you can wire this in to either side, it doesn't matter. There's no wrong way. I'm gonna turn my scooter on. Now with these wires here, I'm gonna touch this way. And if I get no light, then I flip it over and touch it this way until I get my light to work. Go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna put white with white and red with green. Okay, so I have white with white and I'm gonna connect this red, pink, onto this resistor. There goes my headlight wires connected. Just makes it easier from up top with this display unit. So I just save this part for last, but there you go. You can see it, my headlight works. Hold it down, stays on. Turn it on. Now let's go ahead and get our top on, get this thing shut. Right here on my display connector, right here there's a connector that hangs off the side. This is meant for your headlight. I tested out with the voltmeter just to be sure it wasn't nothing above five volts and it measured five volts I got my scooter done. all right so right here it looks like we reached the end of our road this is the end of the video if you made it this far thank you guys for watching please do me a favor smash that thumbs up it helps a lot and it gets my videos pushed out and it helps get my videos recommended so other people can get a chance to view them all right man i'm out thank you control is activated so it's gonna stay activated until you tap it after you tap it and it disengages